easy and clear we can try to move on to the real topic of today uh, and uh, learn about objects and functions so that where this is when we start you know, moving up from the C level of programming onwards. So first of all, objects. Um, the first slide here, if you know something about objects in other programming languages, please forget it. Especially objects from Java, but also objects from Python, because in many object-oriented programming languages, objects are instances of classes. This is not true in JavaScript. Objects are just a data type. They don't need classes to exist. Classes were inserted in very later versions of, of JavaScript. We have a class syntax, class declaration, which is just a syntax variation over a function. We'll see that. Hmm? So basically, uh, when we think uh, of an object, uh, I think it's more similar to if you know Python dictionaries or Java maps. Okay, it's just a name value container that has a lot of syntax built in to be you know, easy to, to handle, easy to manage. And as in a dictionary, Data structure, you can add and remove uh, items as you like. And this means that uh, in JavaScript, uh, you can add and remove properties to an object uh, as you like. Which is something that in Java would set you on fire trying to add an attribute uh, to, to an object once it has been created. Okay? Um, so, objects are first level uh, as a data types in the language can be created directly. You don't need and you don't want uh, to have a class for creating an object. You just create it. Like you create an array. It's just an object. Hmm? Objects are dynamic. So at any time, you can add or delete uh, or modify a property of an object. Uh, like you can at any time add or, or delete or modify the elements of an array. So think more uh, or uh, as versatile data structures rather than class instances. Um, we can also define methods over objects. We see that for uh, depending on how the functions actually work in JavaScript, uh, methods are no different from properties. Hmm? But uh, let's keep this sentence hanging for a while. Um, there, is, there are no control access methods. There are no public or private or protected or uh, please uh, let me modify it or whatever. Okay, uh, all properties of an object can be read and modified and deleted by any code. Hmm? And uh, okay, so we have to relearn in a, a much simpler uh, um, conceptual model of how the objects work. And uh, it doesn't mean that JavaScript is not object-oriented, okay? Basically, it's more object-oriented than other languages. Uh, uh, by comparison with JavaScript, I would call Java class-oriented because the real definition is classes. Uh, and then you have object work. Here, uh, it's really object-oriented because the objects themselves are independent and there's also a notion of inheritance, sort of, from object to object, not from class to class. Okay? It's a bit strange, the beginning. It's not called the inheritance, it's called the prototype uh, inheritance, but uh, we see some of them. Fortunately, as an end, say, say, end programmers and user programmers, we, uh, we need only you know, to, to handle with the simple use cases. If you had to develop a library or a framework, you need, uh, we will need to understand much uh, more in detail the inner working, workings of, of objects, okay? But uh, we see some the, the, the most important uh, issues. So uh, think of an object as a collection of properties with names and values. 
in the syntax you just open a brace uh, and list uh, name column values name column values and so on and uh, names uh, are identifiers basically they are strings strings without special characters in them and uh, and uh, um, values are anything. Values can be strings, can be numbers, can be other objects, uh, can be arrays, uh, whatever you want. A value, just a value, okay? So you have a collection, like uh, the, the difference between an object is, or, uh, and an array is that uh, the index for the object is the name of the property instead of the number of the position. But apart from that, they are both containers of values. Okay. The object is a value by itself that contains other values. And these other values are indexed, selected through the property name. Um, the name of the properties usually can be just written as an identifier, this identifier can also be quoted, especially if it contains uh, characters that are not valid uh, as an identifier. For example, a space inside. Okay, so you can think, and depending on how you use, use it, you can think an object as a mapping from string to value, and this string can be anything. So you can use it as a, as, an, as a dictionary, as an associative map, mapping a string to a value, any string, even if you read it. No, you remember the exercise of the acronyms? We could have the index to be the name of the course that contains spaces, may contain other symbols, and just the key for the value that could be, for example, the acronym. So you could use objects as dynamic containers associative arrays between strings and values. Uh, because the identifier may be any string. The key of the object, the property name, I'm mixing this definition. Key is an, talking about the, an object key, uh, let me think about a dictionary or a map or a hash table, okay? And uh, sometimes you're also saying a property of an object. That brings me more, to me, more memories of a structure's object with properties of different types with different roles. Objects in JavaScript play these two roles interchangeably, depending on how, how I use them. Okay, so I, I may use them just to map strings into something else, and the strings can be anything. Or I can use it to map uh, some property names that I know that I control onto values. And in the second case, probably, you no. Know, for the sake of is digiting, I would choose uh, property names uh, as uh, identifiers with the rules of variable identifiers, and in that case, I can drop the quotes. Um, there is an ambiguity that I will, a syntax ambiguity that I will uh, tell you in a second, okay? So property names uh, are types of strings uh, as in any dictionary data structure, property names must be unique. You cannot have two items in the object with the same name, with the same key, of course. Uh, they can be, this property can be created initially or can be added after. Uh, just by assigning them. So there's no special syntax for adding or for creating a new, a new property into an object. Values may be anything. Um, and this is easy for us to understand, but values can also be functions. Functions are, we said it last time, but we still don't appreciate it fully, functions are objects, a special type of object. And so when a property of an object contains any value, these values could be functions. In other languages, we call them methods, and we will distinguish between property values and methods. In JS, there's no such distinction, okay? There's, it's just a property of an object that, that 
that happens to have a value of type object and therefore it can be called. Um, how to access the elements of an object? Well, depending on your preference and depending on the name of the properties, you can use uh, uh, the dot notation or square bracket notation. They are the same. Book dot author, author. It retrieves the property author of the object book uh, that has been was defined uh, here. Author, yeah, the first one. Or you can use uh, square brackets with a string, and this string will be used as a property name. When do you do I use the second one? When do you use uh, uh, the bracket notation? Well, when the name of the property is not an identifier, so it contains uh, spaces, like here, for example. Chapter, space, pages is the name of a property. I cannot write it with the not dot notation because the space <laughs> will create a syntax error. So I'm forced to do that. Or when the name of the property is a variable. So a, a variable of type string is not uh, is not fixed in the code. Uh, uh, when you write the code, I don't know which property you want uh, because maybe I iterate over different properties, and so I can use the square brackets with the name of a variable whose value will be resolved to a string. So in, that, in this case, the variable would not have the quotes, of course, because we need to evaluate the variable or the expression that give me the name of a property that will be used to index the object. Um, if we are using objects as objects, okay, uh, we use your, normally the dot notation. We try to stick with the simple names. If we are using objects as associative arrays, then these key names usually come from from another array, from a list somewhere. But actually, there are different ways of accessing the same object, the same uh, data structure. Uh, okay, this is what we were saying before, that the DOM notation is just uh, available in, a, in special cases where the name of the key is uh, uh, an identifier. Um, okay, so this is what we already said. Uh, we can think an object as a normal associative array. We can index it with, uh, with strings, uh, with uh, names, and so on. So. Uh, the, the, um, the second sentence here is saying that setting a non-existing property automatically creates it. So let's make an example. Um, let's start by creating an object, uh, a point, for example, that has two coordinates, okay? I, uh, coordinate x, uh, 2, y, 7. Okay. Uh, so at this point, I can use uh, point uh, X, and will give me the X coordinate. I can use uh, point dot X, and it makes the same. I can redefine a property. There is no const for property. So I can always update uh, point of x to 5. And so point uh, will be now 5, 7. Okay, a, a property cannot be bound to be constant. Uh, right now, uh, the, I define the object as with let, but even if I had defined it with the const, this modification could have been possible. Because I'm not modify, modify, modifying the point reference, rather I'm modifying the content of the object. Okay, so even if this were a const, uh, this would be legal. And uh, what happens if uh, I write point of z? I'm assigning a property that was not in the object. Okay. It's added, it's simply added as a new property. So if I'm assigning 
with the name of an existing property that is updated. If I'm assigning with the name of a new property that doesn't exist, it's simply added as in a dictionary. But this is also uh, an object. Okay, and at this point, there is no memory that that was added afterwards. It's just uh, one, like no, when we add an element in the array. It's very much simpler, much uh, lightweight, the, the handling of objects. What I cannot do, for example, is this point, uh, square brackets, x. What's the error here? Yeah. Yeah, I forgot the quotation marks, and so is it a syntax error? What? So this syntax is legal, it's valid, but it does something different. It picks the variable x, if there was a variable x defined in this context, and reads in the content of this, of this variable and uses that content as the name of a property. So for example, to if I wanted to, so it tries to do that, but it doesn't find x is not defined. It doesn't find any variable called x. So let's define one, and let's call it z, just to confuse yourself. And so if I do point brackets x, it's giving me 8, which is the value of the z property. Because now x is a expression. The expression is evaluated as a string, and the string is z. And so z is the index, the index that I'm using to index that. So just remember. You can, in the brackets, you always have uh, strings. So either a string literal or a variable resolved into a string. Okay? If I add uh, x uh, equal to something else, ABC, then the syntax point of x uh, will be different than before. So before, uh, we had an error because the variable x uh, didn't exist. Now x does exist. It's a string, but this string is not among the possible keys or properties that are currently defined on the object point. And so we are, it's like uh, trying to read an element of an array outside the array bounds. The value is undefined, it's missing. None, it's null. In JavaScript, we have undefined. It's not an error. It's a way, maybe, for checking if the property exists. So we can write in our code, if point of x, then do something. And if the value is there, it will be a true, say, uh, condition. If it's undefined, and defined is treated as false, it's a faulty value, one of the few false values in JavaScript, and so we will, we will not proceed or we do something else. So it's, it doesn't generate an exception trying to access a, a property that, oh, these are, okay, if, of course, but also if I do point dot k, it doesn't create an exception. It's not a, an error to try to use a property that is not defined on the object. Yes? Yeah, so you're asking if I try to, what I'm trying to say is I am a variable x, uh, which is a number, okay, 33, right? And you try to say, okay, what does it happen if I try to write like this? Of course, it's undefined, but I could normally define an attribute, a property, point, with the value 33, and uh, even put a different type of values. So 
So I, now I have a, a property which is 33 as a string, and I can access it as a point uh, 33 or point X. And you see, can, you see that in both cases, 33 as a number and X, which has a number value, have been converted to a string before being used as an index. I wouldn't recommend that, recommend that okay? Mixing with numbers and knowing, uh, relying on the automatic string conversion. But it works. It's the general rule. I, uh, uh, an object cannot be indexed by a number. It, all, it can only be indexed by a string. And so if you give it something which is not a string, it will first be converted to a string and then try to do the access. Okay. Um, and uh, there's a, I was mentioning, um, there's a bit of uh, ambiguity in the syntax. Uh, let's see it here. If I'm trying to create, let's say, a new object, a uh, person, let person, and we know this person has a name, property, let's use my one because I know it well, surname, okay. We know we can use the syntax, we don't need the quotes over there, okay? Because they are just identifiers, okay. We can also define a person two uh, by using quotes over the, sorry, property names, and it will work exactly the same, in the same identical way. Identical. After that, you see that when I print them, the quotes are removed because the JavaScript doesn't want to print extra characters. It's maybe. So this ident the, uh, totally equivalent way. And you see that this, uh, when you, this happens only when I'm creating a literal object. Uh, if I try to access this with a square bracket, uh, without the quotes, the name will be interpreted as a name of a variable. Okay, so imagine I want to create an object with a name of a variable, with the name of a property which is stored in a variable. So I have my property name that is a full name, for example. Okay, so can I create a person tree with a property Prop name, full name. So I cannot write like this. Because this will not expand the property, the identify prop name as a variable, as a substitute with a string. As this happened when you're doing the square bracket indexing as, as we saw before. Because in a special case, it will treat it as an identifier. Of course, I don't want to put the quotes because I want the string to expand. And if I don't remember uh, wrongly, there's a trick that if you put the property name into square brackets, it will expand, you, uh, interpret this as a, an expression and use the evaluated nine, uh, string value as the property name. This is only, is only useful when you are creating an object with square brackets, okay? It's not very regular as syntax, but uh, it's a corner case that we may do. Uh, if we don't want to do that, uh, which is, we could simply create uh, a person four with no fields, and then add the uh, prop name, J. 
their name. And it will work, it will work in the same way. Okay, so instead of going to fight to give it a dynamic property name in the object definition, we just define an empty object here without any properties, since we can always uh, add properties later on with a syntax which is more regular and can use any kind of expression for that. So you see the syntax didn't evolve very cleanly, so there are some special cases to be aware of. From a practical point of view, I would say, let's decide whether our object has a fixed number of properties, like a Java object, uh, user identifies for them, and just use uh, the dot notation, or let's decide if this object will be used as a mapping or an associative array, and always use square brackets, uh, both for creating values and for reading values. Let's not get ourselves in danger by mixing them. Um, okay, there are uh, tricks uh, to exploit uh, because uh, in the, to, to, since we don't know um, a priori whether a, an object has some properties or not because there are no classes that create an object with a given set of properties, it's always dangerous to access dangerous. Uh, to access a property, okay? Book to author, does it exist or not? Maybe uh, the author is, a, is, a, is an object on itself with some sub-properties and so on. So it's not an error to access book.author if author doesn't exist because it will be just undefined. But if you try to access maybe the inner content of that property, that will create an exception, an error, because you are undefined dot something, and undefined is not an object. It's not of type object, it's a separate type. So you cannot index it with square brackets, you cannot index it with, the, with a dot and so on. So when you're accessing a property, you should at least be sure that the expression up to that point is not undefined. And so in many cases we see you know, sequences like that. Uh, before entering into an object, let's be sure that uh, the previous uh, uh, value exists and resolves to an object. And this can be short-handed like this. If book uh, and, so if book is not undefined, it will be true, so truthy, not a falsy value. And so the result of the end will be the second operand. Again, the second operand, book.order, is it undefined, then the result will be undefined. If it's not undefined, the result will be the third element, and so on. Okay, so there are strange behaviors of the Boolean operator that we briefly mentioned uh, uh, here. There is also in, in more recent versions of, uh, of, uh, of JavaScript uh, another operator which is the dot question mark. So uh, accessing a dot only the, the property is not uh, like uh, the introducing Kotlin the nullable uh, operators, hmm? but just on the just very recent addition to JavaScript. Uh. Okay, uh, we can iterate over objects. Um, it's not very useful. Uh, it's only useful if the objects are used as associative arrays uh, where we iterate over the values of the objects. If the objects are objects with our own properties, uh, usually we know which properties we have. But in any case, uh, we use the for in. It's not the of of arrays, it's the in of objects. Let's not confuse that. No? For in, iterates over the properties, not the values, but the property names, so over the keys. So in this case, uh, the argument of the, um, of this loop here, for a in, this object, A will assume the value of X as a string the first time and Y the second time, not the value. So the difference is also this, in a, in a for of, you're iterating over the values of an array. In a for in, 
we are operating over the indexes of the keys, the property names of an object. Hmm? Too bad they are so similar and so easy to, to confuse. Uh, if you want to have the keys of an object, so you can also obtain them as, a, as an array with the keys method. Or it's a, we will call that a static method of, ob of the class objects. It looks like, no, if you are thinking Java, but actually it's just uh, the keys property of the object object. Object with a capital O is a predefined object. It's not a class. Class that don't live in JavaScript. Uh, or if you want uh, to convert uh, an entire object into a list of entries, so an array of arrays, you have the method entries that give you couples of uh, uh, key value, key value in an array. So you can convert them without need to, to iterate and to create your stuff like that. Um, copying objects, uh, and then we'll break for a moment. Uh, is again a tricky business uh, because uh, uh, if you just do A equal to B, you are sharing the reference, of course, and so you're creating an alias. This is the same as we did with the arrays and same with any object-oriented programming language. So we need a separate syntax, uh, a separate method for creating a copy of the object. Uh, the, let's say, Book method is to use uh, uh, the function object.assign, which is a strange syntax. Uh, object.assign, empty object, uh, my object. So what it does here is to create an empty object and copy into the, the assign function and copy into the empty objects all the properties that it finds in my object. In fact, assign is a more general method where you can take an existing object, target object, and add to this target object uh, all the properties of another new object where this source, the property of the source object will be either added to the target or, or will overwrite the target ones if, the tar if they are the same name, for example. Um, so a sign is a, is more say complex value if we, we just want to make a copy we the target will be an empty object so that we, at the end it would only contain the properties of the source object that we are trying to copy uh, I'm skipping a bit over the other sign methods because we are probably not using it we are probably more likely to use the spreading operator for creating a copy of an object, like we did in an array. Since they introduced the, the spread operator, it became much easier to create a copy of an object, like spreading. The spreading operator works also with objects. And of course, instead of spreading the array values, it spreads the object properties. So in this case, we are creating a new object with a list of properties that are what? all the individual properties of the book object. And so this is, I, I think, it's even more readable than the object that assign syntax. And if we need to create a copy with additional properties, we can just list them there. And if we, we want to create a, a new object with the union of two other objects, we can just spread the first one, comma, spread the first two, and we're just putting everything together, like you know, the union of two dictionary of two associative arrays. So it's very light on syntax and uh, quite readable. So I would suggest doing that. In our examples here, um, I could do a new person, let new person equal to a copy of person. And you see that, of course. And if we see if the new person sorry, is equal to the person that I just copied from, it's false. Oh, because remember, the comparison just compares references. So I made a copy 
of the, uh, of the objects. Uh, and so there are two different references that point to, point to do two different objects uh, that on their turn point to the same values. Okay, the copy is only at the first level. So if the object would contain an array, that, that array would, would be shared. Uh, we call it a shallow copy, not a deep copy. So it doesn't go duplicating recursively no, the content of the data structure. Um, okay, okay, so I still have one slide to go, but it's very easy. Uh, if you want to check whether a property, an object has a property or not, you can use the in operator. Or you can just try to use it and see if it's undefined. No, it's not here. You can just write uh, if uh, book.author equal to undefined or if author is in book uh, is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, of course, you need to use a string as the property name. And in the simpler way, if book.author, you can use it the, the identifier way. Okay, um, so these are just the basic uh, uh, ideas for creating objects. We don't have many special methods working on objects. They are just containers, so uh, there are no library functions working on objects. Um, there will be another way of creating an object rather than, right now, uh, to create an object, we create it literally, or we create an empty one and then add properties. So we have no centralized control over how an object is created. In every part of our code, we can create any object with any property we like, which is nice to be free, but sometimes we have objects uh, lying around and we really no, don't know which properties they have. So if you want to be a bit more disciplined, it would be better to concentrate the creation of an object in a single point. In other languages, it would be a class that you could then instantiate and so on. In JavaScript, we don't like, we, don't have, we didn't have classes for a long time, but we had something similar that was called constructor function. But for going to that, we need to know about functions, which is the next topic. And hopefully, after the break, uh, we will look into that. So, 15 minutes. We start again at 35.